show that the equation x minus e to the negative x equals zero has exactly one root, and that this root, um, x naught, satisfies this inequality. Zero less than x naught less than one. Okay, so uh, let's talk about what we did well first, okay? To show that there's exactly one root for this and that it has to be between here, a lot of you saw, I mean, maybe you used your reading time, you looked in part two, and you're like, oh, this is one of those approximation things, right? So which piece of knowledge can we use to show that there's gonna be a root between here and here? Which piece of, a lot of you got this question. What did you use? Say it again louder, Aaron. Okay, the discriminant would be something that I could use to find where there are solutions, but discriminants only work with very certain kinds of equations. What kinds of equations are discriminants useful for? Quadratic equations. Unfortunately, in this particular case, that's not going to be so handy. But again, I want you to think. Think about this value, and think about this value. If there's a root between there, right, then what's going to happen between these two values? There's a change in sign. There's a change in sign. Either you go from positive to negative or negative to positive. So all you had to do, and most of you were fine with this, is just evaluate this at each of these values, right? And then you got a negative for one, you got a positive for other. It's a continuous function. So somewhere in between, it's not going to do something like this. I'm negative down here and then I've got a hole and then now I'm positive, okay? It's actually continuous. It's going to do something more like this. So somewhere in between here, it's going to cross. That's what we mean by an x-intercept. Look at the question again, okay? Because what we missed here had to do with the wording of the question. Show that the equation, blah, 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 has exactly one root and that it satisfies this inequality, okay? So if we've tested this value and this value, we have shown that it crosses the axis. But how many times have we shown that it crosses the axis? And if we've only tested on the ends, we actually don't know how many times it crosses the axis, yeah? I drew it like this, but it could just as easily have done something like this. There we go. I mean, that would be weird and strange, but there's nothing impossible about it. So just because I go from negative to positive, or vice versa, that doesn't mean there is, what's the word? What's the key word that makes this different? Have a look, read the question. I've shown there's a root, but I haven't shown there's, I heard it, I haven't shown there's exactly one root. I've shown that there's, there's a root somewhere, but there might be others. So what could I do to show that there's only one, that there's exactly one? Hmm. I gave you a clue right at the beginning when I talked about the common thread that all these questions have. I could have graphed it. Now, this admittedly takes a bit more thinking. So it's not just as simple as, I've got two things, just graph them, okay? Uh, how do you even, what would you do with a graph to actually show this? Well, this is trickier. I don't really know what that thing looks like off the top of my head. If you were extension two students, I would expect you to, I, I would train you in the techniques to be able to work out what that is using this fancy technique called subtraction of ordinates, but you guys don't know that yet. So what am I supposed to do with that? You could go and do some calculus, you could find stationary points, etc. But this is a two mark question, and I've already done enough work to get at least one of those marks. What's a simpler way that I could work with this thing and get a graph? Aha, okay. So let's come down here, right? So following on you with your working. See how in question two, when you see an equation on this side and that side, all that means is look at them independently and find where they intersect. I can rewrite this in such a way to make it exactly the same kind of question by adding e to the negative x to both sides, okay? I know what that looks like, and I know what that looks like, and that's really easy to graph. So let's quickly do that. We'll do the simple one first. What can you tell me about y equals x? I know you've been on some weeks of exams, but I'm not letting you get away with that. What do we know about the graph of y equals x? It's a, it's a linear graph. Where, where does it go through? It goes through the origin, and it's got a gradient of 1. I'll give you that one for free, okay? There's x. Okay, we need to think a little bit more about this guy. So it's an exponential, but what can you tell me about it? 
most exponentials start low and then they go high, right? Like exponential growth, yeah? But this one doesn't, how do I know? Yeah, this negative, it's applied to the x. The x is a horizontal thing, so the negative is a horizontal reflection, right? So this is the graph that I'm getting. I'm satisfied with that? I've got some values here. There we go, okay? Now, is that enough of an argument to show what I was trying to prove? Look back at the question, look back at what we've been asked to prove. Is that enough of a proof for us? What do you think? Hmm, say that again. I want to show that, uh, you know, there's a, a point of intersection between here and here, but I want to show there's only one. And when you have a look at this graph, there's something I'm missing off here. I've got an asymptote down here. So this guy's never going to come back up. E to the negative x has no stationary points. No exponential curve does. It's never going to whip back up to try and catch up with y equals x. You can see over here, they're diverging. There is one and only one solution. That is totally valid working. Everything on that graph is, is there that demonstrates what I need, that there's only one solution. And then I would do my test to show that the one solution happens between here and here, 0 and 1. Does that make sense? Graph, please. It wouldn't have taken you long, and there was the mark. Really easy one to get to. I'm not going to go on to uh, part two of that, because I think once you got to there, you're like, oh, Newton's method, it kicks in. In some ways, that makes part one harder than part two. Part two, you're like, oh, I have an algorithm for this. I can just go through the steps. Part one, you need to actually think a little bit.